Welcome along and welcome back to the old stream farm. We are headed up the shop today because we've got our subsoiler on the back, our diddy little one. Uh, that was great when we had the methane tractor and uh, and and how not very wide that tractor was. Um, now we've got two tractors that are a little bit wider and we need to uh, use uh, a little bit better. So I'm just going to drop this off here. I am getting slightly concerned because my Kubota is approaching uh, 50 hours and is going to start getting to be a real pain to keep functional. Uh, let's have a look. So this, uh, we want to repair it for a pound and we paint it for 130. And it's not a very expensive piece of kit, this. So uh, we're going to sell that back for 487 and then pop into the shop here. And what we're going to replace this with is one from the mod hub. We've got a subsoiler in here uh, and it's this lizard, this SR05. It's a 2.3 meter one. Now we've got a few that are similar sort of widths. This one from Russell Mash doesn't go out far enough, and we're going to clip a lot of stuff with that. So that's no use to me. Um, the Dondi for 12,500 uh, is only a 2 meter. Uh, this lizard here is a 2.5 meter. But again, I'm not really, I don't really think it's quite right for us. Uh, there is this one as well. Uh, the Disco Vine uh, V, which is only a meter and a half. Um, and the one that we're replacing is 1.2. So this one here, the SR05, uh, this is a 2.3 meter. So it's about double the width of the one we're replacing. Uh, it should work fairly well for us. The main color I'm going to get is the blue. And uh, yeah, it's 9,980. So we are going to lease this initially for 508 um and then all we'll lose is 508 if this doesn't work i have learned my lesson from last time and then we're gonna jump in our kabocha and get this yeah it's it's a pity there were so many hours on this kabocha because it's it's a very useful little tractor for our farm but it's uh has a lot of hours on it and so the more I use it, the uh, the quicker its uh, repair goes down. Right. Um, let's lift that up because we don't want to subsoil this land. Just want to have a look at what's in the sales. There's another Valtra G series available in the sales. That's ridiculous. And the our existing one, uh, where are we? Small tractors. It's worth 13,000 with... 35 hours on it the new one that's there has 30 hours so yeah not worth uh, not worth doing that but that is hilarious but there's another Valtra G series sitting in there right let's get this down to the farm and uh and give it a try out so i've learned my lesson from last time and we are going to do alternate rows let's uh just pop out here and yeah we want to start with the outside of this row here bring it here and down and i'm hoping just by going down the middle of these rows it's gonna be enough to get both sides don't want to get too close just close enough that we're able to do this and we might be able again to set well actually i should be able to, to use the GPS that we've got from this field before. So let's turn on GPS. Let's bring up the menu. And we should be able to... Cow Meadow. Yep. Uh, let's load that. Nope. Let's load that. No. Has that given us... Uh, let's see. Has that given us the tracks? Yes, it has. Perfect. So we set that up and we head down here with that. And we see if this works. There we go. I think we need to be in a lower gear. 
One thing I didn't check is the horsepower requirements of this, but I think we're going to be all right. And as I said, we're going to do alternate rows with this uh, as we go. And it should make turning easier. So if we have a look at this turning circle, you see it comes round and we're much more able to get lined up here quicker. In we go. And then when we're in position, down. And will this? Yeah, this seems to get right up to those. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if this works. And we're able to get all of this subsoil, which would be brilliant because it would make life so much easier. So to probably test this, I've come and I'm doing the row in between the first two rows that I've done. And looking at this, I'm quite happy. Look, we are oh, we're stuck a little bit in the vines. Let's jump through. And yeah, looks like we're getting right between the vines. 2.3 meters seems to be absolutely perfect for what we're trying to do between the vines here. GPS keeping us very nicely on track. And uh, yeah, I could not be happier with this. It is absolutely perfect uh this is gonna speed things up no end just like our mower did just like the mulcher did uh this is gonna make a massive difference to getting through these vines and hopefully we can get through these uh in a day and then we're just in a position where we need to get them uh sprayed next time and if we can do that then we are going to be sitting pretty. Um, we will be ready and raring to go for our next harvest. Come through the longer sections of the field, and it seems to be working fairly well. we still got a little bit to uh, work on down the far end, but otherwise, it seems right. It seems there are some cases where it doesn't quite reach uh where i want it to and uh yeah we'll see how well it works what i'm gonna have a look at at the end is uh exactly how good the coverage is i'm still thinking a little bit that uh 2.4 meters would have been better uh certainly we know 2.5 clips a lot so uh 2.4 may have been a better um amount to get but i think we're going to be all right I think this is going to work. We do have some mist grass at the edge here. I don't think it's going to get that yet. So uh, we've not got a perfect setup on here at the moment, but we do seem to be at least having a pretty serviceable one. That is allowing us to, uh, to get this all done. And this little Kubota is working wonderfully well, even if I am worried about the hours on it. But... Certainly, this subsoiler, this subsoiler is perfect for this. I don't know if our other little tractor would uh, would handle it, um, and it might do to to get on here. But certainly, this one is uh, is doing a grand job with it. And I found the right gear ratio. Uh, so uh, high low uh, gear three seems to pull this cultivator the best. And as a result, just, uh, yeah, makes everything easier going the whole way along here. But you can see, because we failed to cut some of this grass along this edge here, uh, that hasn't worked so well and hasn't got that cleared. We'll go around the whole thing, though, and we will uh, get the rest of this field done. And then we're going to move on to the other two. And it looks like we might even get some spraying done today if we're lucky which would just be yeah absolutely fantastic we've got plenty of time left in may to do it um but uh, if we can get this done and the spraying done today that gets us really ahead alternatively we might have some work to do with the animals so uh we've got a lot to check out before uh, before we finish this day's work looking at the coverage i'm getting i'm getting sort of a 99 percent uh, coverage that extra one point uh, one of a meter would would make this perfect but it's it's getting every so often it's just missing you can see down the side there 
uh, a little bit of grass between the rows. And, uh, and as a result, the coverage isn't perfect. It's good, and it's going to increase the yield of these quite considerably just doing it this way. But it's not perfect. And yeah, I think trying to find a uh, a subsoiler that uh, that will do it perfectly is probably uh, a task in itself. There's certainly nothing in our current shop availability that will do that. And let's line this up properly. Otherwise, we're going to clip it. Yeah, there we go. Lined up. And down. And away we go. Uh, I am happy enough with it, though. It is uh, it is working well and is, uh, is going to give us... Uh, and the increase in yield we're looking for from these vines this year. Coming to the end of the final row, and you can see... It's not bad. It really isn't. It's done the job that I wanted it to do. Uh, it will increase the yield across here quite considerably. And if we have a look in here, you can see it's not perfect. Uh, but it's a lot better than any of our other vines are. So uh, I'm happy with that. That's done the job. It's done the job quicker. And uh, and we're... we're looking pretty good now what i want to do is we're going to come over to this field here over to field uh one and do the same here go through all of these and yeah this is this is what we need to do to get all of our fields ready today now what i want to do because we haven't saved it so far is we'll turn the lines back on uh we will then get ourselves well what we'll do is we'll head into the menu here we'll switch this to a plus uh, a plus heading um and yep okay uh the heading we're gonna want is 180 so let's uh, set current waypoint heading is 180 Set that cardinal and then we need to move it across a little bit until we're in the middle of these uh vines gonna be about there i think set it down and uh yeah oh, that is pulling up some stones right on the edge of this field um but be that is because that is the edge of this field we might have to run some grass down the uh, the edge bit there, uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's uh, that's working pretty well. I'm happy with that. Uh, if we pick up, we come off of our GPS and we move into here. Look at that; they're sitting the same place in those vines on this row. So uh, I'd say that this field is set up fairly easy, and the reason why this is so much easier than set up. Uh, than the other field is of course because we planted these vines correctly and uh, and got them in the right place uh, which means that uh, they're much easier to work almost made it to the other side of the field and yeah it's being just as effective on these vines as it was on the others in fact may even be more effective on these vines than on the other side uh, it's going to be interesting to check this field when we get to the other... Well, when we work our way back across it. Um, because it's... Uh, yeah, it's doing really well, this. Now, we I had thought about the possibility of using uh, the G-Series to do this job. But then I realized that our G-Series doesn't have the GPS on it. We could put it on there. And, uh, and that would work fairly well. Uh, it should fit between these vines. It's a uh, it's a thin enough tractor to be able to do that. Um, and uh, would probably be pretty good at this job. And uh, yeah, might relieve a little bit of the time stress with this. Uh, I think I'm certainly going to use the G-Series for carting this year. Uh, we'll, we'll cart the... Uh, grapes with that because we don't need this tractor on that this tractor very much is is 
could be for working between the vines and doing this kind of job. Uh, I think the other little tractor we got, the Anto Carrera we got, we will probably use that to uh, do the spraying and things like that. I think I've said that in the past. And uh, then the, uh, yeah, the G-Series we can use for things like carting and stuff. Stuff that doesn't involve going between the rows, uh, I think, is going to be a good use for that tractor. Uh, damn. Uh, and also things like if we're, if we're doing any uh, grass work at all, which we still do have some uh, some grass working equipment that we can, can do stuff with. And, uh, and the possibility of buying a grass working field uh, would be quite good. Why are we in such a low gear? Does, it is a little bit weird sometimes. I shift between upper and lower gears and it drops down gears and things. I find that happens in general as opposed to uh, being something that happens uh, just on specific tractors or at specific times. So I think it's a more general issue. I don't know if it's something to do with the age of my shifter, um, but certainly, uh, yeah, as it's gone on, it's got a little bit uh, stranger with how it works. The question now is, as we come to the end of field one, how effective has this been? Have we got a similar sort of coverage as we had to the old cow meadow? Or are, have we managed to actually get between all these rows? Let's have a look. And yeah, actually, it's a similar sort of coverage. We do have the odd little bit of red so it's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than the uh, the big whack of uh, of red that we have on the other sets of vines. So I'm I'm quite happy with this. As I said, I think a an extra point uh, one of a meter would give it full coverage and uh, and give us a bit of a better setup. But uh, in general, I think we're pretty good. Like. Uh, before we need to move these lines over. So let's move this over to here. Put ourselves halfway through the vines. Uh, not quite perfect, but we can get it. There, there is about as spot on as I can get it. So then give us there and down. Right. And let's get these uh, let's get these ones done for the first time. This is now definitely too high. There we are. So hopefully less spinning wheels now as we uh, we make it onto this set of vines over here. I think with this set of vines, I finally got planting these things down right, especially for most of this field. Uh, it's much easier for me to track my progress through here with new vines, of course, because we've got the uh, the grass texture on the bottom that disappears after your first year. But uh, it is working well. Uh, we're managing to uh, get through these and do pretty well. Doing this end, there's, yeah, we're going to need to take uh, a set of vines at the end here because it's just not enough turning space. I thought I'd left enough. Uh, I really haven't. Um, hey, that slope just gets in the way so easily. And trying to clear this piece of kit out the end. Uh, well, and, and in fact, it's worse with the mulcher. Is really, really difficult. You kind of need to come out the end, turn the opposite way to where you're expecting to go. So uh, lift this. I will turn this way. Reverse it up like so. And then into here. Just makes it easier to turn. I mean, I probably could have just done the straight up turn, but the other end you'll see. It's much, much more difficult to actually do that. We're not pulling through that bush. And we're, we're kind of working around it. Um, and the very end section, we cannot get up to the edge at all. It'll be fine to spray it but we, we just won't be able to, to get down there to cut or to, to do this. But you can see here, yeah, we're right up on this. 
Uh, I think that needs smoothing at the very least. Uh, well, no, no, I think we just need to take the ends off. I think the end rows of these will just make that maneuvering that much easier. Right. Onto here. And down and in. And away we go. And look. It's, it is that easy. I, I love using the GPS on this. It just works. Add another set of vines all done and dusted. And yeah, again, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. Uh, we are at the point now where we need to get this kind of coverage and we'll still make a, a lot. Getting really close and in is too time consuming to be worth it uh, at the moment. A, a, and I'm convinced a 2.4 meter wide subsoiler would absolutely get this job done. Uh, we would easily, easily cover it if we did that. And these ones are slightly further over. So let's move these in. Get them going through the middle like we have the others. Line ourselves up and away we go. Hopefully this will finish at the far end and uh, come out here is what I'm hoping. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We are on target to get all this done today, which is great. And we might be able to go and do a little bit with some of our animals to finish things off. Um, but uh, yeah, our vines are looking good. We're looking like we're going to head into uh, this year's harvest, which is still several months away. Uh, with our vines already and getting about the maximum we can uh, in yield from them. Uh, as I said, with these bits we're missing, it'll be down slightly uh, in places. But in general, I uh, I think this is going to be a really good year, especially with all the new vines we've got. Um, at this point, the farm probably has all the vines that we want to get on here to get ourselves set up. So, uh, yeah. I am very, very pleased with this setup. Although, uh, we do need to sort out the road down here. Because it sort of leads into our vines at the moment. Whereas it should be just going straight. With how well developed our farm is now, I'm very much looking at uh, where we are. I think we're going to go to episode 60 on this series. Uh, I think this is episode 54, so six more episodes after this. Uh, we are looking to get to the next grape harvest and beyond it uh, and produce those grapes and get them sold off. I would like to try and set the aim for the end of this series to buy the harvester outright. Uh, we've got a fair amount still left to purchase on there. Uh, if we come and have a look at our least harvester. Uh, so if I was to try and purchase that, uh, we need 216,000 off this year to try and do that. I think that that is quite a tough goal to set ourselves uh, from this year's harvest. Um, I think we'll see where we get and see how close we get to that. I don't think by any means it would be a failure if we didn't because I am very, very pleased with how much we've managed to do on this farm with the uh, just starting from scratch using what little land we have and, uh, and making a vineyard. We have a properly functioning vineyard on here. And uh, yeah, if we could buy the harvester and complete the farm, that would be awesome. But um, I'm not fast if we don't. I'm I'm already very, very happy with this experiment and how well it's gone. We have spent, we probably spent a couple of hundred thousand on planting new vines year on year on here. So uh, I don't think getting that harvester is completely out of the question, uh, especially uh, with selling textiles and things as well over the next little while. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how we do. But, um, yeah, six more episodes after this. And uh, and then we'll look at how well we have done. 
An area that I've never really taken advantage of on this map is this woodland to the side of Field 5. We own all this um, and uh, can use it if we want. Looking at some of the trees, though, and what we've just been through on Stone Valley, I'm not sure I'd want to clear this so much. Uh, some of those trees are going to give me a big headache. And it's just an area that we own and that we've paid for that is not of a huge amount of use to us, unfortunately. Uh, and it's quite bumpy in places. I just, yeah, it's a pity to have all of that land and uh, and it, for it not to be useful to us. Yes, yeah, so all of this woodland. And it's about double the size of uh, of the space we're actually or it would double the size of what we're using um to actually use it but i'm not sure whether it would be worth doing it whether it would be worth cutting all those trees and uh and then smoothing the whole thing out which would cost us a load of money and then on top of that also um then planting with a load of vines it would probably pay off in the long run but i think it's really hilly in there and uh and would likely cause us a lot of problems i think i continually underestimate how long it takes to do this field uh we are about halfway back so that makes us about three quarters of the way through it and uh and yeah it's 20 past five um i'm fairly sure our animals are okay uh and i will get them checked but i think we're not going to get much further than doing this today i always wonder about uh whether i should do one field with both this the mulcher and this and then do a second field with the mulcher and this uh and have that as one day or whether i sh uh, and then do the other two fields the other day or whether i should just go through and do this job across everything in a video uh for one day and and mulching for the other and i kind of come to the conclusion that i like going through and doing all of one job across all my four fields in one day because that kind of makes sense to me that would be how you do it on a farm you wouldn't partially do one field and and do both or you know you wouldn't do one field and do both jobs on there um unhitching your equipment so that you could then hitch the other one on just to then go and unhitch and 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 do it all uh, again i don't think so uh yeah this makes more sense to me the other way to do it would be if uh we had one piece of equipment on one tractor and the other piece of equipment on the other tractor and ran it that way so that's that's a possibility i suppose um either way i'm quite pleased with all of our progress over the last couple of days we have got this field uh, all of our fields are looking much better and uh, and as i said the yield uh increased on them even if it's not to the absolute maximum uh and the new fields are coming along nicely they're uh yeah they're all gonna be set up and uh, we should have uh, a boost in yield across everything this year which is the aim coming to the end of field five and something really really strange has happened on field five that hasn't happened on any of our other uh vineyard fields or or sets of vines today and i cannot explain it i do not know what we've done differently on field five compared to every other field today but if we come in and we have a look how how has that happened we've missed stuff on every other field field five 99.9 percent .9 done that is so odd and i and i have no explanation for it whatsoever um, what we do need to do, though, is, uh, is two things. One, uh, we know now with what's on field five that this subsoiler will do the whole field and, uh, and not miss anything if we use it right. 
So uh, evidently on my other fields, I haven't quite got the positioning of the GPS and everything right. Uh, on here, it's it's worked perfectly. So yeah, we got to fix that. Uh, oh no, I want this and that. Uh, secondly, is that we can uh, we can buy it. It works. It works absolutely perfectly for what we need on here. So uh, I am going to buy it. It's uh, it's exactly what I want for this field. Uh, we also need to refill this tractor with fuel. I'm just going to give the tractor a wash as well. Uh, we want to refill this tractor with fuel. Otherwise, we're going to forget to do that next time and end up with that wonderful little error we had before. Uh, in fact, yeah, it was last time uh, where this ran out of fuel. So, um, a day's work is uh, fairly thirsty work for this now. Let's refill this. And we're probably going to have to do some maintenance on this tractor. In fact, let's go, uh, let's go maintain this now. Because if we have a look at it, yeah, that's getting fairly low. I want to see how much it's going to cost to repair this. And um, because it does need some repairs. Bring it over here. Bring it into here. Into our workshop. And just jump over. And let's see. Uh, 1,000. Actually, not that horrible. So we'll repair that. Yeah. So uh, not too bad considering its age. And uh, we're going to go and get rid of our subsoiler. And get it put away. Uh, all in all, though, I think that's been a really successful day today. We have got everything uh, subsoiled as much as we can, really. Uh, as, as I said, I think going back and trying to, to fix those patches that we've got across the those three fields is going to be uh, a bit counterproductive time-wise. Um, it is really interesting that Field 5 has we've not missed anything on looking at my greenhouses they are all okay uh yep i think we have to do some stuff with the animals next time we do need to spray these fields as well and i think we're going to be using uh the antonio carrera to do that job um but i'm pretty pleased that is all great so uh i'm gonna leave this here for today so all that remains is for me to say Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.